It's good to be saved today. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. And uh, I've got one verse of scripture today. And Ben, you've run all over the house. And I've had you standing, sitting, standing, sitting. I'll just let you see it. If you'll find the book of Proverbs in the Word of God, and you find chapter number 14, and if you look down at the bottom of that chapter in verse number 34, you're going to find one simple little verse there. And as you're as you're looking for that verse, I want you to look and see what this tree is all about today and the reason for it. And as we begin to think about Christmas, sin without a doubt today is something that God hates. God hates sin, but God loves the sinner. God loves that precious sinner. And sin is the wedge that will drive and keep you away from God. And it will separate you. And I have a very short, simple message today. And God hates it, but, and He must bring sin to judgment. God must bring it to judgment. God, through the 66 books of this Bible, has, it's all about sin and the judgment of sin and the cure for it and how God made a way from the Garden of Eden all the way to the palaces of glory. And people say, well, I can't live a perfect life. You're exactly like you are. Boy, you nailed it. Why? Because you're living in a body with a sinful nature. You've got a nature that loves sin. So God has to do something about that nature. And he did it at Calvary. The blood of the Lamb of God. We were we had a funeral yesterday, and Friday night we we were over in the mountains, over there Friday and yesterday, and followed a family that we dearly love. And as we went, uh, Brother Jimmy Hines, you you folks didn't know him. But we grew to love Brother Jimmy over the several years that we were pastor over there. And Sister Peggy, his, uh, his lovely wife, and uh, they, God blessed their home with a son by the name of Matthew. And he was just a little fellow the last time that I saw him, but he's grown now and got a wife and a son or a, a child, I don't know if it's a boy or girl. Was it a boy? But anyway, they live in Asheville, North Carolina. He's up there in school now, but he's married. He's gone back to college. And uh, he's, uh, he's a fine young man. But anyway, but uh, Peggy put Brother Jimmy in a beautiful, beautiful casket made out of cedar, cedar, beautiful, beautiful. And all the beautiful things that you could, you could do for anybody in this world, 
won't save them. That's outward appearance. But I remember when he got saved while I was pastor over there. He didn't get saved at church. He was quiet, a quiet man. Took care of our cemetery and our church grounds. But one day I saw him there and I stopped by, I pastored full time. And I just stopped by and Jimmy and I were talking. And he was different. He was different. Preacher, I got saved in the kitchen floor at the house last night. How do you know? How do you know? Well, you see this old, see this old thing, it's pumping insulin in me now. Bad diabetic. He said, one day I won't need it no more. He said, Pastor Dean, he said, I'm going to a city. Whoa, glory. I'm going to a city. Why? How do you know? He said, last night God covered my sins with the blood. That blood you talk about, right across the road down there in that church, he said, that blood covered my sins last night. It covered my blood, covered my sins. And the word of God in, in Proverbs chapter number thir, uh, 14, in verse number 34, the word of God says, righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin but, why do you think God put that in there? God allowed Solomon to write this book. Couldn't find it for a while. Solomon made a lot of mistakes, and I, I wondered if Solomon ever made it into glory. And I had to find it, and had to search, and had to dig. Solomon was a liar, cheat, and everything else. Running around a womanizer, drunk liquor, wine, everything else. But he had the love of God on him. Had the power of God on him. And Solomon got straight with God. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He lost his joy, but he didn't lose his salvation. Because I want to tell you something, you didn't find it, so something you didn't find, you can't lose. Something you didn't buy, you can't sell it. Something you had nothing to gain, and nothing you didn't do, have nothing to do with, attaining it. Brother, I want you to know, sister, God gave it to you as a free gift. God gave it to you. And God said Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. And I found it in there where God said that he loved him and he gave his, his, like his daddy, his heart was settled on God. And that thing was settled. Sure, Solomon made mistakes. Sure, David made mistakes. Sure, you've made mistakes. Amen? And but brother, I want to tell you right now, Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs. He wrote the Song of Solomon. Brother, he wrote Brother, he wrote Ecclesiastes. He wrote with the hand of God, with the power of God. He had God on him. He built the house of God with God's hand on him. And he's in glory today because of the faith that he had and the road and the closeness he had with God Almighty. 
And the Bible says, but sin, the righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Sin will cause you to die and go to hell without God. Sin, we will never know the side of eternity and what grief has been caused by sin. We'll never know it if you've been saved. We'll never know what grief has been caused by sin. We'll never know it because we'll never go through what God went through. Heavenly Father, and Almighty God, bless the Word of God today. God help us, Lord, to see what three little letters God caused heaven. What can cause a lost person? What can cause you? What can cause us the pain, the grief, the sorrow? In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to look at three little letters today. And we're going to close and we're going to eat some dinner. But today I want you to look at S-I-N. I want to take the letters of the word and show how awful it is and something, something of what it does to a human family. I want to show you what it'll do to your life. I want to show you what it'll destroy, what it'll tear down, and what it'll ruin. And what you cannot enjoy and what you cannot have. If you, if you expect to go to heaven, you cannot enjoy. The pleasures of sin are just for a little while. The just for a little while. This flesh will enjoy sin. This flesh, oh, it'll enjoy the pleasures of sin. And there are a lot of sin out here. They're seeing, oh, the billboards, they paint, oh, they, they paint a beautiful, beautiful picture. But the letter S, it separates you from God. It, man in Genesis in chapter number three, in verse number eight, I want you to look at something. Look at something here, and as we begin to look at this, I just want to read just a few verses of Scripture. And the Bible says in chapter 3 and verse 8, Then heard the voice now. Now listen. Adam here, he said that he heard a voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. Now look what they done. They hid from God. They hid from the, uh, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God and amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? Man began hiding from God and I'm not going to read no further, but I want you to read from verse 8 down through verse number 19. And you can read down through there and I won't take the time, but Adam and Eve began to, they hid and then they went out there and they got some fig leaves and they began to sew them together. And he said, well, why did, you, why did you do that? He said, we were naked. He said, who told you? He said, you took the fruit. And he said, well, he said, woman that you give me done that. She done it. Well, the devil done it. You begin to blame it on somebody, and you begin to blame it on everybody else. Well, who got you drunk last night? Well, young lady, who done this to you? Well, they done it, they done it, they done it. Who got you into this? Who made you rob that store? Who made you do this? Who made you do that? Everybody wants to blame it on somebody else. What made you, who wrecked the car? Well, that guy hit me, that guy hit me. That, 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 well, they run into me. That's the reason we got law enforcement. They had to figure it out. They had to figure it out, they had to see. 
They, that's right, got courts in the land. That's right, God put the book of Judges in there. And God said, God said, bring them before the courts of the law. God said, set you up a court, set you up a law. You bring them before the judges. You bring them before the elders and let the elders search it out. Men have been liars from the beginning of the world. Ladies too, you're not immune to it. Read read, read about the women that had a little baby. They each had a child. Read the story, run the river about the midnight hour. That's the reason you be home and get before midnight. Read about what happens to those who stay out after midnight. Oh, they brought them before Solomon. One rolled over on her baby and killed it. They come before Explained it. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just cut and give each of you half. And the real mother said, No, no, no. Rather than kill my baby, just give it to her. He said, Oh, no, 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 no. Rather than kill my baby, let her have it. He said, Real mama. That's the mama. See, it takes a real woman to be a mama. Any woman can have a baby, but it takes a woman to be a mama. It takes any, any man can father a child, but it takes a man to be a daddy. Sin can destroy. A man a crying, not only a man hiding from God, but a man crying to God. Look at Psalm 51, verse Not only a man hiding from God, but a man crying to God. And what what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about a man uh, wanting some help. A man uh, wanting somebody to take and get a hold of God. In the book of Psalms, won't uh, turn there, but what was, think think about, I I just, just a minute. Think about the Psalms. In the book of Psalms, what is, what, what is he saying? Think about one. The Bible says this. In Psalm 51, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the thy multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my oppressions. David had sinned against God. And, it, and what he is talking about all the way down here. And he said in verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth. Wisdom. God knows that you know right from wrong. Well, I didn't know what I was doing. Don't lie to God. God knows you know what you're doing. Not only was a man hiding from man to God. Look what sin does. Sin separates you. And in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2, what is here is a man denied an audience with God. A man denied even talking to God. This is what sin, the S in sin. Here is a man, he said, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened. He said that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your sin, your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. You just go on sinning and you go on playing the part of a sinner. You just go on and go on and go on and go on 
And after a while, God said, I'll just cut you off, and that without remedy. God said, you can go so far, and sin will lead you out, and you'll run out of rope. I'll just, won't hear you no more. I'll just cut off all the supplies to you. No more hope. Your sin and your iniquity. Look what sin has done. It's caused, God said, sin, many sleep. Many will never see the lights of home. Many will die lost without God. Why? Because of sin. What said there in Psalm 51, I was shapen in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. You were born in sin. You started lying from the crib. My two children learned how to lie oh at midnight, two o'clock in the morning. You think dear God they were dying. I'd go in there and come up goo 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 goo. Oh dear God. Take that light of you I mean that you'd pick them up and dear God I mean spoil rotten. And man, you had to go to work at five o'clock. The lying little boogers, but they just wanted somebody to play with. They didn't know what time it was. They didn't understand it was the middle of the night. Sin. In sin. Look. This eye. Let's look at the eye. It increases sorrow. Eye. It increases. The longer you go, the more sin follows you. It increases your sorrow. Oh, one little, one little beer. One little bottle of liquor. Oh, one little trip to the, nobody didn't see me going to the liquor store. Nobody, nobody, hey, hey, it, 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 nobody didn't see me pick up that. Nobody didn't see me. Oh, I went, what about, I read something, uh, no, I didn't read it. I heard about it or something. I think I, I think it was. On radio this week about a woman trying to get out of, uh, was it Coles, with a buggy full of clothes. Was that right? I heard that on the radio. She's still in a, a cart full of clothes, tried to get out of the door, and uh, they, some of them caught her. I believe it was like six or seven hundred dollars worth of clothes. Who in the world would try to get out of the store with that much clothing and think, hey, buddy, I tell you what, I couldn't have wore them if I got out of the store. My heart would have burned in me. Oh, dear God. Sin, it increases. The world, I'd have put that on, that'd been like a flame in my soul. I couldn't have wore it. I couldn't have put it on. Oh, dear God, that would have burnt deep in me. But the thing about it is, look at the rich young ruler. In Mark chapter 10, in verse number, number 22, look what he said. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurry through this. And the, the thing, thing about this, and I, as we begin to look at this, Christ, they come, they come to this rich young ruler. He was te telling them about this. And in Mark 10, in verse number 22, look what he said. And he said, he, he was sad, and Jesus beholding him, he said he loved him. He said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, one thing thou lackest. And in verse 22, he said, he was sad at that saying and went away greed, he said, for he had great possessions. 
He didn't want to turn loose of the things he had in this world. Oh, he had a shiny new car, maybe. Maybe he had a four-wheeler and a boat, and he had a fine house. And uh, boy, he had everything in this world, had a big bank account. He didn't have time to go to church. He had everything that this world had to offer, but sin in Christ. Uh, the stock market was raising. Oh, it was increasing. And he, boy, his bank account, he was floating in. He didn't God in church. But sorrow was coming. Rebellious prodigal son. In Luke chapter 15. And look, look at what the word of God said. The word of God said this in verse number 14, 15, and 16. It increases, sin increases. Look, I'm looking at the letter I. In verse number 14, look what it says in chapter number 15. And when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine and in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. But look at verse number 16. And he would have fain have he filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Everybody was his friend until he ran out of money. Look how, look how his sorrow increased with sin. He ran out, he ran out, and he ran out. But the thing about it was, the prodigal, the rebellious prodigal, he had, he had everything he thought he wanted. How long did he stay in the, in the field? He stayed out there till he got tired. And he said, I think I'll go home. See, God will break you if you're his. If you're his, God will break you. But if you're not his, it don't bother you. Just take you further and further and further and further and further. Had a neighbor. We milked cows in an old slab-sided barn. Milked 26 head, Brother Jerry, twice a day by hand. Get up 3.30 in the morning, run them old cows in the barn, and mud up to here, and cow, uh-huh, up to here. Yeah, we didn't have a modern cow barn. And them poor cows, their udders, they were cracked. It was cold and snowy, and we'd rub salve on them because it hurt them to grip them, to milk them. It hurt. And it would soften the skin. But we would milk them twice a day by hand. 3.30 in the morning, we'd run them in. We had an old dog named Boots. He would go ahead. Run them cows in there, we'd milk them. But the point I want to make is the man that lived above us. He lived above us. He went out there and propped up on the gate. Laid his arms on it. Just like that, he had a big old bull down there in the field. Big old sucker, I can still remember him, Diane. Laid his arms up on it. My uncle's name was Arzy. He said, Ike, we called him Ike, everybody did. Ike, I ain't a bit more afraid of that old uh, bull of uh, God Almighty than I am that old bull. And he said, I'm going to tell my wife to bury me in a chest and a casket because I want to go through hell popping and a cracking.
And I went to school at Piney Creek, elementary school, with his daughter, with his children. And if he ever got saved, I don't know it. But I want to say this to you. He'll never go through hell because there's no end. Hell is not the end of it, folks. Hell will be brought into judgment. After hell is judged, you go into the lake of fire, and there you'll be for all eternity. It increases as sorrow comes on. And not only that, there's the regretful, regretful betrayer. The sorrow, it increases. Who is that regretful betrayer, preacher? I look for this. Who would he be, Jay, preacher? Preacher, who would he be? The regretful, the one that had gone as far as he could go. His name was Judas. Oh, he'd gone as far as he could go. He wanted to take Christ off of that tree. He wanted to stop the crucifixion. He wanted them to let Christ go. He wanted the priest to take back the 30 pieces of silver. He wanted them. He didn't want God to die. But look what happened in Acts chapter 1. Look at Acts chapter 1. Look what happened in verse number 16. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by, uh, he said, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained part of the ministry. Now this man purchased a field and the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst of all of his bowels, burst out. He hung himself and his bowels, all of his body, burst out on the ground. Sin will take you farther than you ever want to go and the paycheck will be more than you ever thought you'd have to pay. That's just a S-I-N, or A-S-I. But let's look at the end real quickly. It never goes unpunished. N, S-I-N. Sin, the end, it never goes unpunished. There is a payday in Joshua, chapter seven, verse number 16. I won't take time to read it, but there was a man by the name of Achan. Oh, the Joshua had separated and give all the land out and Achan got everything that his family that God wanted him to have. But I want just a little bit more. Mama, I want a little bit more. Mama, I want to stay out to two o'clock. Mama, I want to stay out. I want to, I, no, no. God said, Achan, you family, you've got enough. They went up to fight again in the little city. God said, you don't take nothing. You destroy everything. Achan went up there. He saw a pretty garment. Oh, God, nobody will see me. He got that. He got a little wedge of gold. Got a little bit of gold, and he, he thought he'd just take that and Nobody had never know it. He stood, I mean, a wedge of silver, $130 worth. Write this down. Just $130 worth of silver. That's all he took. And he got a little, little bitty bunch of gold, and it was two, $490. I figured this up for you. And you can add it up, and it was a total of $620. That's all God. And he got it, and he hid it under his tent floor. 
Nobody will never know. But he forgot about God. And here the whole crowd went up again, a little old bitty city, and it cost, I believe it was 36 men, wouldn't it, died that day? What about their, his wives and their children? See, sin. See, the end, it never goes unpunished. And here Joshua come back, a preacher. Preacher, we hear him, boy, that old preacher praying. And God said, Joshua, get up from there. It wasn't you. There's sin in the camp. He said, you get to sin out of your church, boy. You go through this camp and you get that sinner out and you find out who it is and you get him out of here. Preacher's got a hard job, do you know it? A lot of people get mad when God, when preacher puts somebody out for the right thing and a lot of people think it's the wrong thing. But God said, you set my house in order and the rest I'll do when I come. See, I don't tell you everything. But the thing about it was, oh, he started going through. And he came to Achan. Sin don't go unpunished. A little over $600. And he came to Achan. And Achan said, I've sinned. You know what God said? You kill Achan, you kill his wife, you kill his youngins, you kill his, all of his mules, you kill all of his cattle, you kill everything he's got, and you pile it up in a pile. You stone them to death, and then you burn them. But you burn them outside the camp. Fire is the payment for sin. See, sin don't go unpunished. You might think you, think you get, get by with me, with your family, but you don't get by with God. Number two, a sinful woman meets death. A sinful woman. In 2 Kings, 2 Kings, in chapter 9, verse 30 through 37, she killed one of God's men by the name of Naboth. Her name was Jezebel. Naboth was God's man. Now I'm going to hurry through this. She took, took his inheritance and gave it to her crybaby husband by the name of Ahab. Killed him. Kill little old Naboth and took his inheritance away from him. Lied on him, took, took it away from him and killed him. And her husband wasn't nothing but a crybaby and he was laying, sucking his thumb. Read the story. He went to bed. I want that. I want that. Read it. He wasn't nothing but a hen-pecked husband. He ought to roost it on the foot of the bed. Because Jezebel said, I'll go get that for you, honey. He said he was in the bed and he played sick. What's wrong with you? I want that land. Why do you want that land? It joins our summer cottage. They had a summer home down in Samaria. And she said, oh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll kill him. I don't care if he's God's man. I don't care if, if he's a preacher, I have prophet. I don't care what he is. I'll kill him. 20 years passed. Do the, do the homework. 20 years passed, Daddy. She thought God forgot. But Jehu, David's captain, happened right in town one day. She heard about it. Boy, she painted her face up, ain't nothing wrong with it. Any old barn needs a new paint job once in a while. I don't care who you are, put some makeup on. If it, boy, if I had some tape, I'd use it too. Okay, but the thing about it is this. 
she heard about him coming to town. And she leaned out the window. And old Jehu looked up at her. He said, who's on the Lord's side? All of them hollered and raised her hand. We are. And there's two eunuchs up there that said, we are too. He said, throw her out. They threw her out. They just drove on. The blood splattered upon the horses. 20 years. They done told her. Said the same way you killed old Naboth. Said the same blood said going to splatter up on you. She, she thought God forgot. God don't forget. Except what's covered by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm still on letter in. I've got one more point and I'm done. And the thing about it is this. They went in. They had their dinner, all of this. They may have had blood on their shoes or whatever. Old Jehu said, go out and bury her because she's the king's daughter. Go out and bury her. When I turned dogs, done not eat her. All oh, her skull, her palms of her hands and her feet. You know why? She had mishandled the Word of God, mishandled God's man. Her mind had connived and her brain had, had they had, she had worked up all this mischief against God and against God's man and she had trampled and carried bad news and used her feet to connive and to carry misleading and unjust stuff against God's people. They didn't need her brain, her head, her hands, and her feet. That even my dogs wouldn't even meet that. See, the thing about it is, folks, never, it never goes unpunished. The last thing, a disobedient preacher, disobedient preacher, mm -hmm, preachers don't get by either. Mm -hmm. Who do you think he was? thought he could get out of preaching. He got old Jonah, got swallowed up by a big old fish. Yeah. Oh, Nineveh had misused. Oh, and run over God's people and Jonah's people. Had lit them up like a torch. And Jonah said, I ain't preaching to that ungodly bunch of people. God said, you will. You will because I'm going to see to it. How many miles is it from Nineveh to Tarsus? I've done just a little bit of homework there. It's 2,500 miles. And the Bible says, oh, Jonah went and bought him a ticket and he said he paid the He was going 2,500 miles that away. But God said, you going that away, and you're going to preach. And Jonah said, I'm not, I'm going that away. Well, God said, I got something down there, it's going to send you that away. And boy, that old fish come back up there, and he got sick of a Baptist preacher and he spit him out. And boy, that Baptist preacher, boy, he done, he went on a day's journey, boy, and he, he hit the ground a running. Why? Because he got tired of the guts and the slime and all of the doodads that was in that fish. Boy, when you get tired of sin, boy, you'll hit the ground a running. Say. Sin don't go unpunished. 